Hey, welcome back everybody. Today what we're going to do is uh, pull the engine off the CX500, uh, get it out of the way so I can do some other uh, trip up cleanup stuff around the uh, center stand area. I want to cut off a couple of brackets there. I don't need them. I'm going to go side stand only, no center stand. As well, um, start cleaning the engine up for a, uh, a paint job, new hardware. Engine doesn't need to rebuild, it just needs to be uh, cleaned up, freshened up, put back on. Then I can get on with modifying my fan um, and painting all the accessory stuff. Uh, it'll probably go back on for a little bit, then it'll come off. And as you know, you know, I gotta, when everything's, everything's done, disassemble the bike completely. I've got a big uh, bead blaster, sand blaster next door uh, in the dark side, which is becoming the light side very quickly. And um, then we'll throw that in there and bleed blast and clean the whole, the whole frame. And then uh, I'm going to epoxy paint the frame because I have the ability to epoxy paint it here. And if I make other changes, uh, I can easily epoxy paint areas and not have to send the things out for uh, powder coat. So that's what we're up to today. Pull the engine and uh, get it, uh, drain the fluids out of it, pull it off, and get it on the bench. So if you're interested, hang around. Okay, step one, drain the oil. Excellent, step two, pull the filter, we'll drain what's in here. Step three is pull the tank and the seat. Let's do this first. This is easiest. I could probably put that seat away for a while until my latch appears. Now since we have the exhaust system already removed and the radiator and all that stuff, um, we don't have to do that at this step. But I do have to remove the rear brake pedal to get it out of the way. And um, so get that done. I've already loosened it of course, it's all ready to come off. It's been off in some of our previous work that we've done. Okay, moving right along, I've spun the bike around uh, in the shop here just for better lighting and, and angle for camera and stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, slide this boot back for the, the final drive so that I can uh, expose the bolt that we have to remove here to disconnect the drive shaft from the engine. Um, of course, in this whole process, if you're removing a, an engine from your bike at home possibly, um, most of this stuff's already been off the bike. All the electrics are disconnected, the, the fluids are drained out of the waters, out the radiators off. There's a lot of stuff already off this engine, so this is fairly simple removal. So um, just make sure if you're, uh, if you're doing this, uh, just follow your manual and have a look. It's, real, it's really simple to pull the engine. So I'm going to use my little uh, lift uh, to just lift the engine weight off a little bit. I have to turn the back wheel to, to expose the bolt um, on the final drive so that I can disconnect it and then from there we'll take off the hardware and we can lower the engine off the bike. Hang around. Okay, the rear wheel's off the table now. Now I just have to move this boot back and expose the bolt. Now always be careful when you're using screwdrivers and rubber boots. If this boot gets torn or ripped, you have to replace it. Uh, it's, I mean, this is an old, an old piece of rubber. And if I have to, I mean, if I break this, rip it, tear it, getting it off, that wouldn't surprise me. It's very old and brittle, but we're gonna try to take it off and not damage it. 
There we go. Just be careful in the process. There. And I have a feeling that this is the seal. Look at that. It popped the seal for the final drive right out of the case when I did that. There we go, push that back in. So there's the spline on the drive right here. I don't know if you can see that. Right here is the spline on the drive. There you go. There's the spline on the drive. Now we just need to turn the rear wheel until there's a bolt. Oh, there it is right there. There's the bolt that we need to take out. right there. So we'll pull that bolt out right there and then we'll be able to disconnect the engine from the drive. 12 mil it looks like. Okay, there's the, the drive. There's a 12 mil socket on there. And there's the locking pin that holds the drive into the final drive of the engine. Okay, now we'll be able to undo the hardware on the engine and slide the engine forward and out of the bike. And if you look at that, uh, I don't know if it'll focus on that or not. You know, fairly rusty, corroded bolt holding the engine on. Probably be looking for some new hardware for that. This bolt runs all the way across from this side right through to the other side of the engine. 17 mil head on it. Looks like I'm going to have to get a... Oh no, it's not moving. Let's see if it'll screw out. I should take a little bit of weight off the jack. It's probably lifting and pinching a little bit because I lifted the rear wheel off the ground. Try that out, see if that helps. Now the engine's basically hanging from the mounts here and these two, so there shouldn't be any more load on this than this is loose now. There we go. And a punch that's uh, smaller than the center of the bolt. <clears throat> Same thing, long bolt, some corrosion. I'll have to clean that all up. It's probably a little more difficult to find that, that bolt as a replacement. They'll be fine. Clean it up, paint it, put it back in. Just adjust the weight a little bit. Make sure the bolt's clear easily. I just like to put the hardware back together so when I go looking later, what nut and bolt went where, at least they're together. Now these up in here, engine supported well. OK, 
Okay, this is the last bolt and I could feel with my leg, I could feel the engine settling down onto the stand. So we're pretty much loose there now. Hardware back together. Put my tray. Now this bolt's pinched a little bit, so I'll have to adjust the weight to knock this bolt out. And then try not to uh, knock it over and kill myself. Yeah, I won't kill myself, but you know what I mean. Try not to wreck anything. No, looks like it's gotta come down a little bit. No. Okay, it seems about neutral. I'll give it a bit of a tap. Let's see what we get. All this hard roll need to be polished up, well, cleaned off and decorroded and refinished. That's it. It just needs to go forward to get the drive at this point to put the spline to pull out. Engine weighs 165 pounds, so it's only 10 pounds lighter than me. See the engine's forward about an inch at the top, half an inch at the bottom. The drive hasn't changed, so I, I'm going to tap it with a little piece of wood and a block. There we go. There. The drive is uh, finally loose from the uh, final drive shaft. I'll probably get this out of here now. This wouldn't come out before. It's it's designed to kind of fit in behind the engine. There's, of course, coolant dripping all over the floor. And I think I'm going to try to change this bottle out, make something different, but we'll see. Not today. As you can see, once everything is off the engine, uh, disconnected, you know, wiring, coolant, all the other stuff's out of the way. Pulling the engine off is a pretty simple, simple task. A few bolts. The drive is the trickiest thing to get it in the right place, get the, the bolt out, the retainer out, and slide it off. But other than that, it comes off pretty quick. Now, had I made a better plan, and it's always about making a better plan, is I could have taken the bike off of the nose wheel support that it's on so that when the engine supported, I could really just roll the frame back a little bit and we would be out of the way. I think I can start to lower this now, now that the drive is out completely. Let's check, be sure. Not quite, just got to twist it a little bit. There we go. I think that's good, yes. I don't know if you can see that, the drive is completely out now, so now I can lower the engine down. It's sitting nicely on the stand. Come on, boot, get out of the way so we can see what's going on here. There we go. Trying to be very careful and not tear that boot up. There we go. There. Engine removed. Now I can do some um, some nice cleaning, fixing up, prepping to put the engine back in, painting uh, areas. I can take small components over to the uh, bead blaster, clean them, paint them. I have to make a final, 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 final decision on frame color. Uh, I've got the charcoal, as you can see on the tank and the base of the seat, and I kind of want to go with a satin black finish on the, re the whole rest of the frame, and I'm, I believe I'm going to go the same on the engine, high heat black, uh, kind of a satin finish on the, on the engine as well. 
very stealth black looking. That's the idea today. And as you've seen in these videos, tomorrow is different than today. Sorry. Anyways, now I just have to get a little bit of a lift with a friend of mine, we'll pull the engine out, and we'll put it up on the bench. But that's, uh, that's as easy as it is to pull the engine. Well, thanks for hanging out with me again today, guys. That wraps up the engine pull from the CX-500. A pretty simple project, a couple of little tricks to it, but other than that, pretty easy. So we'll get on with uh, the rest of the cleanup as we talked about and um, get it looking pretty, and we'll show what that looks like. Thanks very much.